Here are the six best inexpensive high protein foods you can get at Walmart. Bulk chicken thighs, 95% ground beef, tuna fish, Greek yogurt, cottage cheese, and 95% ground turkey. Those foods right there, high protein, low calorie, inexpensive. They're great for building muscle, getting lean, and getting you to your fitness goals. And of course, best of all, you can find them anywhere, including Walmart. I've always thought this argument was silly. That mm. that eating healthy was expensive? And and I, I've, I've never, uh, it's, or it's never resonated with me because anytime I'm eating out, that's when my bills go up. That's why people right. think eating healthy is expensive because they think of yeah, they eating- restaurants. Yes, they think of healthy restaurants, like yeah. you know, the ones that are crunchy healthy yeah. versus like unhealthy restaurants like McDonald's or- Burger King versus, you know, that 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 boutique restaurant down the street that's supposed to be healthy. Yeah, yeah, farm 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 raised or for farm to table type yeah, of place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. then it's expensive, but uh, when you go shop, you go grocery shopping for your food, it's it's far and we're not even counting by the way the savings in healthcare costs, you know, cuz you're not you're not going you're going to be healthier. We're not counting the savings in productivity because you're going to call in sick less to work, you're going to work be more productive, you're probably going to earn more money, like all the things that happen when you're healthy, actually save you money. We're not even counting that. We're just looking at the cost of the food. When you buy these things in bulk, by the way, I didn't throw vegetables or starches in there, but you buy a bag of rice, potatoes, frozen vegetables, all the things that I yeah. said in there, you've got everything you need and it's not just inexpensive, it's the least expensive. Well, that's the easy stuff to get. I mean, protein is, it's not as... Uh, simple in terms of it, like I could just go down the street. And I'm like, you have to really be intentional and targeted. This is what these types of foods is what kept me sane when I was in college as a yes, starving dude. student. Because like, all my options were always just like really heavy carb based in in, in the cafeteria, and it just got uh, exhaustive. And so to be able to have like a little grill like in my little dorm room, and, and then like get like turkey and, and like make patties and like do all this mm -hmm. stuff and buy uh you know this meat in bulk was was game changer i, I just did this yesterday so or no the sunday right today's tuesday so Which i did meal it prep yeah I, it was six pounds of ground beef like little, and i did had to fill up the uh my rice cooker twice to enough bulk rice so i don't know how many i think i had to do like 12 uh -uh. 12 cups of rice or something like that is what it ended up being um, and, and ground beef. And all I threw in there was I seasoned it with Montreal steak seasoning. I think it's great on ground beef like that. And some, I threw some onions and mushrooms in there just to give it a little more flavor and, mm -hmm. and texture. And, and then I added to white rice, one, one cup of white rice. I mean, and now I've got a breakfast and lunch for the entire week. And if you're not somebody who can just eat rice and meat for breakfast, you can crack two eggs on it and boost the protein yeah, if you, you like. And now it's like a breakfast, you know, bowl. Oh, I mean, uh, there was a period that when I first uh, opened my own personal training studio, there was a period there where I was just trying to be very conservative with my money. It was a new business, uh, you know. I I, I had uh, just had my my first kid, and I wanted to be very smart uh, about my money, and so I ate a lot of ground beef, rice. And frozen vegetables. I would make bowls with it. And it's what I ate most of the time. And it's actually simultaneously great muscle building food. Yes. It's great getting lean food. It's great food also, but it's also very inexpensive. So this whole argument about it, um, you know, being expensive is so wrong and it's damaging. It's actually damaging to believe this. The truth is um, just on a dollar for dollar basis, it's, it's far less expensive. And then on top of it, like I said, we're not even counting all the other cost savings that happen from just being healthy. I mean, if you look at the data, and by the way, the reason why I know this data is because when, when I managed gyms, we used to do, uh, we would sell memberships to typical consumers, you know, the person walking in or person that lives in the neighborhood or whatever, but we'd also sell what were called corporate memberships. And corporate memberships were where you would go to these large organizations, these companies, and the company would pay a fee to cover the enrollment costs of X amount of employees. And sometimes if you did a real good job, the company would cover the entire cost. So you'd go to a company like Apple and they'd say, yeah, we'll buy memberships for anybody who wants to come uh, work out at your gym. And they'd give us a big check and it was a big deal. And so one of the ways that we would sell these memberships is we had to present them with data because for a company to do this, A, it has to attract more employees and B, there has to be some kind of cost benefit. Otherwise, it's like, okay, why are we offering this perk? Is it going to give us something in return? And the truth is the gym memberships did all of the above. Not only did employees like it, because now they have a, a gym they can work out at, so it's a cool perk. 
It also saved the money to the tune of for every dollar that a company invested in uh, in fitness and health for their employees, they would get back two dollars in return. That return came in the form of uh, reduced insurance costs, so people get sick less. They they're healthier, cost the company less money to cover them under insurance. They also called in sick less, so people were they they weren't absent as often because they were fit and healthier or, or more fit and more healthy, and they were also more productive. So it's like every dollar you spend, mm -hmm. you get two dollars in savings uh, as a company, and this is real data. We were real good at figuring this out. I worked for a very large fitness organization that figured this out, and this was a selling point. So it's less expensive to eat healthy any way you slice it. So that whole thought process, that excuse is is just, it's so false. It's not even close to the truth. It's the opposite. It's, of the it's truth. actually even, even more convenient than people make it sound too. Yes. Like, okay, so Sunday, I absolutely did dedicate a couple hours of my day uh, to prepping. But now that it's prepped, that's like, like the whole week done. It's so con so easy. It's all set up, and the and I don't overthink the the like dressing it up process. You know, mm -hmm. like literally, I could I have a giant iron skillet, so I could throw like all six pounds in there at one time, yeah. and like just cooked up all six pounds at one time, and just threw the mushrooms and onions inside of there, and sprinkled all the seasoning on it, and just boom, that whole easy. thing is done. And the rice cooker, everybody knows how easy a rice cooker is. You just throw it in the cooker, walk away, and it's done in like twenty minutes. Like that's it. And then like portioning it out. That's was by, the, the, by the way, I included in here some options that required no prep on purpose or minimal prep. So yeah. you, you don't have to cook tuna fish. It's done. You open the can, <laughs> you throw it in a bowl, you can add whatever you want to it. You don't cook Greek yogurt or cottage cheese. Those are all there. They're ready to go. In fact, you know, if you can have dairy, cottage cheese is incredible bodybuilding food. It's great. It's got high quality protein, both casein and whey. It's high in whey protein. Um, it's, you can get very low calorie cottage cheese or full fat. If you want a little bit more of that texture, a little bit more calories and you could buy it a 50 gram protein serving of cottage cheese, throw some fruit in it and boom, you've got yourself all, your great macro breakdown and it required zero prep. You go to any grocery store, you buy a, a peach, you buy your cottage cheese, slice it up, throw it in there. You're done. You know, and I gave those options on purpose because the other argument is always, well, I don't have time. I don't have the time to, 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 you know, get the food ready. Yeah. I, I mean, I find that it saves time, saves money for me every time, every time I do it, every mm -hmm. time I do it, I, I'm, I'm always like, man, I just, and I always have that excuse of, oh, I'm so busy. I might do this. And it's just like, if I just make one day of the week for me, Sundays yep. tend to be the easiest, uh, because getting ready to set the week up. We're typically home Sunday afternoon or evening that I carve away a couple hours that I prep these meals out, uh, for the week. Then you're, and, and to me, I think that having it there and ready is is what makes it easier to make the right decision. It's always challenging when you have a busy life, you have a family, kids, and you're trying to make every meal in a healthy choice that day. Then and there. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and maybe you get a couple wins in a row like that, but you know, sooner or later life happens and you get busy and you get behind and, and you skip a meal and now you're trying to play catch up. Just having something already prepared in the refrigerator makes things uh, uh, so much easier, you know? Oh, yeah. yeah. The uh, cooking in bulk is, is everything. I was trying to think of the uh, um, the, the type of cooker. It shows you how much I cook. I was, like, thinking grill, and that's, like, all I know. Um, <laughs> the one that's, like, you, you you put it in, and then you leave it for, like, all day, and it just cooks it really oh, slow. Crock pot. Crock -pot. Yeah. yeah. So, like. Uh, anytime like Courtney leaves or like I'm trying to like, you know, be ahead of, uh, you know, and prep for the week and all that stuff. Like we'll just put like a big old pork butt in there and like, you know, and then you can just make uh, all kinds of stuff out of that and, and add some Dude, rice. But it's just like if you do that ahead of time and you could just pick at that throughout the week. So in my, in my stu when I had my personal training studio, I had either I would prep or if I was real lazy, you know what I had in the back? I had a, a foreman grill. Yeah, it was easy. I had ground. That's, that was my go-to in college. I yeah. had gr ground I, beef in, the, and we had a little fridge, you know. Yeah. And I'd pull it out, throw it in there while you know my my finishing up with the client to walk back, throw, throw it in, come back, done with my client, go back, it's finished, and I eat it real fast before I train the next client. Super easy. I lived off of that for a long time. Oh yeah, the crock pot is just one of my favorite go-tos. Uh, we haven't cracked into that on this prep for me yet, but that's always something because uh, I can fit like 
three, four pounds of uh, chicken thighs in there oh, and yeah. you get chicken thighs in there and it just falls apart mm -hmm. and then you get like shredded, shred shredded chicken and then I make bowls. Slow cook. It's I go so shredded nice chicken what over was rice what was with a little from, bit of green salsa and cheese. Now, what was it from Butcher oh, yeah. Box that you were using the crock pot that you were like, you guys got to try it? Was it ribs? No, 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 not ribs for the crock pot. No, 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 no. That's that was the shoulder. Whoever was doing the shoulder yeah. in there. Oh, that's one of these two guys. I oh. wasn't. That wasn't me. I use the. Yeah, I pork. get the chicken thighs from there. And, and you that's put. And you put the chicken. Oh yeah, the chicken in the in the crock pot is amazing because it shred. It makes it. It makes it so moist. You literally just pulls apart. All their chicken is but is pasture raised. All yeah. of the uh, the butcher box chicken is yeah. yeah so you get uh, just a better nutrient profile. And I noticed the same thing with grass fed meat. If I eat a lot of uh, pasture raised chicken, grass fed meat, heritage pork, I seem to feel better yeah. than when I switch. I'm okay well, with meat no matter what. It's the balanced chicken, and I was kind of looking at that because they don't have like the enormous breasts that are like <laughs> totally like like hormone you know injected and and like uh, antibiotics and all that. But uh, I was actually I was watching a video. I was asking Adam about this because he used to work you know in the. Uh, with, with the uh, uh, farm yeah, yeah. and whatnot, and um, I saw this video of this this chicken coop that had wheels on it, and so what they did was they they were able to rotate through the pasture, like it just slowly so the moved. Bottom's open. So the bottom's open, and the and the chickens can freely like you know pick for oh. insects, and they can they can eat grass well, and that all that kind of sense. stuff. And then yeah, and then that way when they shit and they the fertilizer, like it it distributes that evenly throughout the the pasture. Oh, and I was like, this is brilliant. brilliant. So when I was in high school, my uh, I was one of the only five organic dairies in all of California. And so the guy I work for was, that, By the way, was that just coincidence or did you look for one? You, oh, you I, had, just, I didn't even know what organic was. I learned what organic was <laughs> in high school. And then, like, remember, that wasn't a popular thing back when we were Bro, kids. What a, for, uh, what a yeah, foretelling, yeah, by the way. Wow. How did you even know you were going to be in the fitness industry? Oh, I had no it? idea. No idea. <laughs> nor did I even have any... Like, I learned from him what organic was. Like, I didn't know what an organic dairy, organic farm, mm -hmm. none of that, what that even meant. Like, and it was working there that I learned all this stuff. And so he was always forward thinking on... Like, I feel really bad because that, that dairy ended up going out of business business I, I really think a lot of it was he was just too far ahead of his time because mm. the organic movement didn't come until like 10 late 10 yeah. years later after that but he was also so he's go to new zealand new zealand in the dairy industry and the farming industry is like ahead of us in a lot of in a yeah. lot of ways just the way they structure their their cattle farms the way they do their That's chicken bread yeah, we still and stuff get like a lot of cattle from there and so i remember we built this thing and i remember what are we doing so he bought this cheap you know trailer it was just a, a regular old like car trailer or whatever and we built wood frames on it built a house on it and it was a chicken coop and then the ch chicken coop had a little door that came down it was a little ramp for them to go in and out and then we had the because it was a trailer it just hits right on the quad and then i every day i would come into work i'd have to move it about you know 50 yards wow and it allows the chickens to come out and they graze on all the bugs and everything like that that's in there and they and they pick through all that they also poop all over that so it, it, it doubles as fertilizer for the grass for mm -hmm. the cows that come back and graze on it because we also had the or oh, organic dairy so smart and so yeah no we used to uh, we used to do all that it was uh i didn't know what the hell we're doing you know so i didn't know what <laughs> i don't know why or what the big deal is but i just that's, remember that's doing so great doing it back then and so it's interesting to hear that uh butcher Box is, is doing that with the chickens Dude. because hey sorry to interrupt look i have a free guide that teaches you how to lose fat in three steps just three steps that will burn the most amount of body fat and help keep it off this guide is totally free we're giving it to everybody right now if you want it Click on the link at the top of the description below. All right, back to the show. It's so funny we're talking about this. I, I have found this this area where I can really connect with my my three and a half year old. Like really connect. Like he seems to be really into like science and learning, which is great because as a dad, you really want to connect with your kids. And sometimes they just they're not into things that you're into. So you have to fight, you have to really make yourself be into what they're into so you can connect with them. Luckily, I'm blessed. He's really into science. And the way I figured this out is I was, you know, I was hanging out with him and we're talking. And off the top, you know, I'm always trying to think of things to spark, you know, spur conversation and, and hang out with him, not have to use the TV or play with him. And sometimes you're, you know, you want to play, but I was tired. So I'm like, I want to talk about something. So I said, hey, do you know what a what a carnivorous plant is? He's like, what? He knows the word carnivore from dinosaurs. We've talked about dinosaurs. So I started talking about Venus flytraps. So we learned all about Venus flytraps. I ordered one. We now have one. Uh, so we did that. Those then we talked about, fun. huh? I said, those are always fun. They're great, yeah. right? Aren't yeah, they yeah. great? By the way, you can buy them on Amazon. Do you know that? You can buy a Venus fly. Yeah, of course. I didn't know that. Yeah, it's weird, right? Yeah. So we get it. And it's been so fun, by the way. We have in the backyard. Mm -hmm. 
and you know we watered it and then yesterday i went out to the front yard and i caught like a little bug and yeah. then i put it in the mouth you of it, and feed it spiders he was jumping ups and down he was so excited oh my god it's i'll have to do bug. that max will get a kick out of that so actually. so he would love it because of mario cause yes because he's he, he's we just, in fact his last mario stuffed animal was the was the piranha perfect plant. yeah yeah so he'd... so we did that um and then uh i was just thinking off the top of my head like what else is cool and i'm like mexican jumping beans did you guys uh -huh. ever own those uh -huh. when you were a kid? i remember that yeah okay I do remember that. by the way do you guys know they're seeds they're not beans they're seeds they're seeds yeah do you know why they jump I, I thought it was worms. There was There's a there. worm in yeah. there, and the reason why it jumps is the worm is trying to get the seed from a place that's hot to a place that's cooler. So when the sun moves oh. and the shade moves, they jump around, and because of the shape of the seed, it'll flip. It's got two flat surfaces, and it eventually will move to where it's cooler. Uh -huh. I only learned this because I'm, I'm going doing course, this. Of course, of course. So we got those. Then we got magnets. I've been doing this throughout the weeks, right? We got magnets. We're learning about magnetism. Such a great time. Just for dads out there, like if you have yeah, kids. Yeah, no, I'm totally going to steal this. And it's fun. It's really I'm fun. I'm going to steal yeah, the fly trap. Uh, um, colonies. And Haven't all done that, that stuff. yet. Like, yeah. It's okay. funny because even Everett's still into that stuff. Yeah. You know? And we like, we'll take bugs and we'll feed it to the ants and watch oh, them like, wow. to, you know, devour them. And, uh, you know, and then we'll take our magnifying glass out and burn stuff. <laughs> I did that with them. <laughs> it's a good time. That is yeah. fun, but you got to be careful. Yeah. <laughs> if you leave the magnifying glass out, that. Can start fires for yeah. sure. We, we, yeah, we we're like contained, but we're total pyros. Yeah. So it's like, you know, I kind of I got I got to also recognize that like I did a lot of worse things. You know, yeah, <laughs> so I, I. I made it out okay, so but I. I, I do kind of like okay. You know, we got to at least like be a little more reasonable. Do you know, there's a theory that uh, I think it was the Greeks used a massive. Uh, device that reflected the sun, kind of yeah, like, a big mirror, like a gold mirror. Yeah, to yeah. to to, to wasn't set that, other. Wasn't that on that ancient Greek show or whatever like that? I wasn't that on Probably. there. Probably, I thought it was on that one. And they tried I'm... to build one to like see uh -huh. take it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kind of cool, right? That is cool. You know, we uh, yesterday I felt bad for Katrina because yesterday is like our really long day here, right? I didn't get out of here till for really late, and uh, we had our first really bad spill right uh i've talked to you guys in the show right since we started um about max's journey barefoot and like just he's been incredible like his stability and everything oh, like that yeah. we had our first like real like bad fall. oh no yeah i mean it like scraped up his knees his elbow oh poor like, kid what yeah, was he doing like he was running you know running and playing with kids and then bailed. yeah and I, I don't know i mean i didn't see it happen right so it, it sounds like he just you know tripped over his feet or tripped over something while he was running hard and just a asphalt and just knees elbows everything skinned mm. up really really bad and just i guess he broke down and was crying and wanted his mom and everything like that and they finally calmed him down and he's constantly asking when's my mom get there and then she gets there and he is just like i mean my overly sensitive son if you can only imagine who's never fall like this is just i mean i call katrina before i get home I'm like, what are you doing? And she's just like, I haven't moved from the couch all day. Like, he's just, if I get up to go to the bathroom. He's devastated. Oh, yeah, he is just, and he's doing the whole, like, he can't walk. <laughs> yeah. I, can't. So I, come down the, I come down the stairs this morning, right? And he's like, he's, he's oh, bro, he's it. over the top right now. He tells, he tells, I, I'm like half awake because they get up a little bit earlier than me. And I, he's in the room and Katrina's already up from the, out of the shower. And he's sitting on the bed next to me. And, and Katrina's like, okay, we need to go, get ready for it. And he's like, I don't think I can go to school today. And she's like, are you sure, son? And, she, and he, she's like, because you, and she tells him, you can stay home with me, but mommy's got to work all day, which means no cartoons, no iPad, you know, but if you want to play with your toys and read books all day, you can stay here with mom. And he's like, you can tell he's like thinking about that. Like, like I don't know. yeah, I don't, I, don't know if I, <laughs> I don't know if I can, I don't know if I can go to school. I don't know if I can do it. Well, let's, let's try. Let's get downstairs. Try. I come downstairs and he's. He tells Katrina, he says, the, the backpack is too heavy. I can't put the backpack on. So, <laughs> so Katrina takes the water bottle out of this and that. No, I think it's, she's like, okay, do you want me to get your your old backpack that you used to carry when you were four? You could carry. You were four years old when you carried that backpack. He's like, okay, let me try that one, right? So she switches out the backpack to just, and the way he's moving is like, he, he comes over, she goes, Tell, give your dad a hug goodbye. And he comes, he's like, Walking, I said, "What are you ninety? <laughs> I said, "Come on, buddy, you're gonna be okay." I give him, a, I pick him up and give him a big hug. I said, "Hey, you know what's something about us, us Schaefers? You know, you know we're strong and resilient, right? We're tough. Like when we fall down, we get back up." And I kind of give him that, "Okay, daddy." <laughs> he turns around, and he's like, 
walking out out the out the house just so slow, dude. And Katrina's all just mummy down. Just yeah, that's literally what he's doing. It's like all mummy down. Bro, he's I, like, both my kids have pulled that shit dude, on me. Dude, dragging dude. his feet. And they're I mean, they're yeah. decent scratches, but I mean it's just like I mean they're just some scratches. You imagine these kids being right on like my, my older kids. You imagine these kids get get you know raised by eighties parents like we were. Did you see okay there's a there's a viral Oh you broke your leg, walk it off. There's a viral <laughs> comedy uh there's a viral comedy clip going right now. I was watching it literally it was so funny that this is the conversation what I just saw and then on the way to work I saw this thing come up in my reels and it's a guy who's talking about what happened to all the kids in cast he's like yeah. I, when I grew up in school everybody you come to school it looked like a, I forget dude, what he, what he said good point. he yeah. said he made some analogy of like an old like paraplegic like, like, like <laughs> and he's like someone's foot is yeah. up on the desk another person's like everybody's everybody's signing the, everyone's something. signing cast. he's like when was the last time you signed a cast Kids don't. He's like, I don't even know if that's a good. My point. kids have even done that, bro. He literally made that. He's like, cast. yes, I, that's a good point. When I was a kid, so many casts. There was always time. one oh, or two dude. kids, always at any moment, in your always class had with some a some, something. some sort of a cast on. He yeah. goes, you don't ever see that anymore. You go, every everything is uh, emotional now. Everything oh, is oh anxiety, emotional. That's Nothing is physical yeah. anymore. They're never physically broken anymore. They're emotionally broken. They're what if it's a trade off? You know what I mean? What if it's like you either hurt yourself physically or you suffer? I've, like it, like you need to go through something. Yeah, like, maybe. I, mean, I don't know. Maybe I'm throwing something out there. I don't know. It was wild when we were kids. I don't though. know. Yeah, it's, that's the thing. It's like we've tried to kind of clean up some of the like. I'm gonna actually like pay attention as a parent, yeah. you know, and like see, uh, you know, but. I, I think that's turned into bro, like no, you can't climb on bro, that. When no, we you were can't kids, do this. Listen, when we were kids in the eighties, when we were little kids in the eighties, cars had ashtrays. Okay, everybody? <laughs> your parents smoked in the car while they were driving with you, and you were not in a car seat. I don't even think anybody had with car the seat. windows up. No. You were sitting, yeah, bro, <laughs> no, bro. You were sitting I was probably in the back on the lap, up, in the laying front. down like uh, yeah, no, yeah, breathing gasoline, oh, like. Man. Literally, the gas tank was like right. So my okay, head. this is so. Then it's probably the same. I mean, that's a great extreme analogy, right? Of okay, so we we've, we've probably corrected that, right, for the yeah, good. Well, sure, yeah. Just like, the, like, like we, yeah, we, and we probably don't. <laughs> we probably don't need kids and broken arms and legs I, all over yeah, the place, right? It's not like so we, a necessity. So yeah. we've corrected. We've corrected for the good, but like anything else, yeah. like everything else, uh, we've overcorrected. Yeah. And there's unintended consequences of overcorrection. You know, so overcorrection of the physical injuries all the time is now we get emotional injuries all the yes. time. Now oh, they're they're geez. now their feelings get hurt. Which and they one's get worse? Hit. I don't know, dude. I think I definitely I, I'm think leaning. That, <laughs> I definitely the think the emotional ones way crazy. way worse, way worse. Because I feel like the physical thing is is a bro. Like, I had a high I had a teacher. I had a high school freshman year. This was a real PE teacher. This was real. Everybody. He was a teacher. And if a kid didn't refuse to get in the pool to swim because you had to go through that whole you know. Two month period goes so He would throw him in. Oh I God. saw him throw kids fully clothed <laughs> in the pool. Every you know what happened if a teacher just did their that? Their head now? exploded right <laughs> now. <laughs> That's for real. I almost want to say his name because it's legit. <laughs> yeah. I, don't, you know, I don't know if I'll get him in trouble. I, this is where this is where Katrina and I are different because I'm so. Yeah, loud. I'm, I'm kind of so like, hey, like we were just, seek or swim. This weekend we were just over at my sister in law's house. They have a pool, and you know we're we're at, we're all outside, and Max is on the other side of the pool, and he's kind of doing his own thing, and he's walking close to the edge, and Katrina's like, Max, Max. I'm like, let him go. If he falls in the pool, I'll go get him. You know what I'm no, like, no, it's like he's gonna, no, it's like you're gonna drown in five seconds. I'm like, I'm right here. I'm like, someone's well, got a statistic yeah. probably to count. Oh that. god, of it course. Five seconds. Yeah. Hey, you know what? Watching. That's what led to all this fucking emotional anxiety and problems <laughs> yeah. right there, bro. Yeah. Is the, the one statistic the of the one kid that drowned yeah. in five seconds is why everybody freaks out. I'm like, trust me, he'll fall in the pool. I'll get over there in time. We'll be yeah. fine. That like, was the same it, kid with all the food intolerances. Stop. Stop. You know, like mold, allergies. That's different. Come on. That's different. I said, you know what? I said, guess what? You know what? He'll probably learn the next time he won't get that close to the pool when he falls <laughs> in. <laughs> you guys are going too far now. No, no, I don't know. Though. You know why? Because this is the dad over here the same way. <gasps> yeah, no, yeah. No, no, no. I was at, yes. okay, so I'm like, have food I just have <laughs> vivid, yeah, vivid memories. I'm like uh, at the dog park and my dogs are doing their thing and I'm like trying to watch them, but then my kids are climbing trees and then like all these other parents are kind of walking around. They're like. Oh my God! He, like, look at these kids, and like they're pointing them out, and then there's like, yay! I have the great old time. Like, oh yeah, they're you know they're gonna have to figure out how to climb back down, you know, <laughs> and they're just like freaking out. They just like, are you serious? Like, I swear to God, I thought Dude, one of them was thinking about calling CPS. Look, look up pictures of school, of playgrounds yeah, yeah, in the eighties. They were already this crazy. was a school. Bro, playground. I broke my arm on like a huge monkey. First bar. of all, they were way higher. That's actually probably statistically when we talk about that's what everybody. Broke I, almost everybody broke their arm. Wait a minute, the monkey, wait a minute. Monkey, monkey bars were the 
worse. Yes. Hey, hey, did you guys I, see I, someone break their arm hey, at the playground? Yeah, I did. Yeah. Yeah. I remember a monkey I did. bar. I actually can picture this. I remember monkey bars that were not quite as tall as the crazy ones back in the 60s they showed you, but it was good. Oh, yeah, but you ever see the 60s But I do, remember, <laughs> I do remember that they're in inside this, the, the uh, not, it was in a sandbox, it was dirt. It was there dirt. was a, a pipe that ran <laughs> under, yeah. under, underneath. Yeah, so yeah, why? Like just waiting for some kid to just fall yeah. and crack his arm or skull on it. <laughs> Well, they're all like composite flooring and stuff. When we yeah. were kids, the best the best you would get if you were lucky was tan bar. Yeah. If mm -hmm. you were lucky. Look at that playground, bro. I know. What decade is that? That's like 100 years ago. Is it? Oh, yeah. Man. Look what kids That's used to play the on. The glory days. You guys, listen. I wouldn't go up that. Right now, as an adult, I'd be terrified. We're li little kids used to climb that. Nah, That's crazy. Yeah. That is Let's... pretty wild. It is really But yeah, when we were, I mean, you remember hot? When it was hot outside, you go get on the slide, you it melt burn. your hand because yeah, it was all metal. It burn you. <laughs> well, I almost sliced my big toe off because like, I, I slid down with no shoes on, yeah. you know, and it, it caught the corner. <laughs> now, like do, a we, rough edge. do we... Um, do we do we come back like this? Do, like, a, do we come back or do we just keep going this way? Like, do we do we find that we do we start to appreciate that? Okay, there was some value in allowing these kids to be able to learn the hard way in some of these things, and do we start to go back to that? I'm direction? not sure. There's enough parents on board with like the old methods. <laughs> I think you could go too far. I think there's there's and and and, and there's were the, reasonable and were, the, and were these parents right here, right, that had kids that grew up in the twenties saying things about us who grew up in the sixties and the eighties, right? Was so is it just well, that no, every, they, every, they, they every, weren't every, saying that. They were saying this is good because because in the twenties they were working in factories with Yeah, mother. exactly. They didn't have playgrounds. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. so they're like, this is great. <laughs> Your children are playing. Oh my God. Yeah. I used to I mean, have to I make just, shoes so and, I'm on this kid because I watched that yeah. Masters of Air. Doug brought up Band of Brothers. Oh, so yeah, I went back yeah, to watch yeah. that again because it's been so long. Great movie. And I, mean, I don't even series. remember half that half of that series. And Loved so it. Katrina and I are really enjoying it. And I just can't I'm just all I'm thinking about is like these these 20 year old boys that willingly went to a, a cross like that. And there's a scene where uh the guys like one of the sergeants is talking to the guys who's who's got obviously crippling anxiety anxiety about it. And like he says, one of his problems is like you you are looking at this the wrong way. Like you're trying to you're so scared and afraid of all this stuff like that because you're you you're thinking whether you survive or not. Like you accept death now. Like we're not coming home. We're mm -hmm. dying. Mm -hmm. Like that's part of becoming a good soldier yeah. is recognizing you're not going to live. <laughs> it was yeah. like that is wild to me yeah. that that is like part of would be part the of the mentality. Yes, was the process was that you just have to accept death, yeah. and then that makes this process of being a good soldier and gives your chance of actually yeah. living. But you have to first accept that. It's like that is wild, and that is wild to have done that at that age to accept that that role that you're going to go do. There's that. definitely it's, a reasonable yeah. balance. There's a reasonable balance. First off, you need to let your kids lose at sports and games. If they're playing stuff and nobody's keeping score and everybody gets a trophy, that's a big problem because the real world doesn't work that way. Number two, yeah, I would say absolutely a problem. stop hoarding over your children all the time. Like Let them play a little bit. Let them go. And th that way they feel that sense of freedom. I don't think it's a bad thing to let your kid express their feelings. I do think... You can go overboard with validating everything in the sense that, yes, you really feel that way, yeah. but not being like, yes, it is the end of the world. Like, okay, your toy broke. For you, this is terrible. I totally get that. Versus, it is the end of the world type of deal. I think there's some reasonable uh, ways to do this, some balance. Because if you go back to previous generations, it was a little too far in one direction. Now it's going too far. I think in the other I mean, direction. I, I, I mean, there's, what was that? What was that thing we saw? That stat? How many kids bring their parents to their job interviews? Oh, oh my yeah, God, that it was like sixty something percent. It was so ridiculous. It was a way high number. It, it was more than zero so percent, which should be the right that. number. Yeah. Oh my God, zero percent is the correct answer. Yeah. It should be. <laughs> yeah. So whatever anything over that <laughs> it was is a high same. percent. Maybe it wasn't sixty five. It was thirty five. Our Tommy it was definitely is more really than a quarter. Good. More than a quarter of these kids were bringing their their parents to a yeah. job interview. You had to bring your parents. I did a lot of interviews. I did a lot. I did a lot of interviews. Right. I can only imagine if some kids showed. Up to oh, my job kid. with their parent. I mean, I would. This is me. I would look at the parent and be like, you know, you just he's not getting this job because yeah. of you, right? Uh, you know, like, he's that's failing because of what you guys have done. Yeah, like, you've the, done a terrible the fact job. That you as a showed up. Yeah, the fact <laughs> you showed up for his interview. He's not you getting still this wipe job. Wipe his ass. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Unless I'm going to get you here working all the time. For yeah. Him. Are you both applying? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Can you, are you guys part of this deal? Actually, I'm. I'm interested. Yeah, yeah. I am. This uh, is, yeah. A, is this that's a two, three for one? Yeah, right there. It's twenty six percent. So it was just over twenty five percent in person interviews. 26%, <laughs> one out of four. That is so high. Brings their mom or their dad. 
That's to God, an interview. Are we just done with being embarrassed? <laughs> Is that like not a thing anymore? Like people just don't get embarrassed. And I mean, like, what what goes? If to I your, ask, you know, like, if what I goes through your head that you think that's a good idea? I I don't know why, why I know what's the thought process. I'm trying to think of it right and now. And then what as a it? parent, what are you doing? Like, what are you doing thinking that's a good idea? Yeah. I mean, you can, okay, drop off your kid and leave maybe if they don't have a car. But oh, do you doing? think maybe that's what's included no, in the stat? No, this means bring a parent to a job interview. Yeah. Literally. Dude. 26% physically present in the interview room. That is crazy to me. Yeah. What say? What does that say? That, kid, that kid probably never left the bed either, right? Dude, if he, I he never had his own room, his own crib. Can I just tell wow, you? Wow, look at that right there. What virtual interviews? Seventy-one percent respondents said their parents was off camera, while twenty-nine percent admitted their parent was visible on screen. <laughs> <laughs> so three quarters of you have your parents sitting in the room listening to how you do with your interview, and twenty-nine percent of you let you let them sit right next to you on the Zoom call. Weird. And what are they doing? Coaching them behind the camera, like behind the, you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, 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 no. Tell them. <laughs> tell them about that award you yeah. got. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> tell, tell them about your participation the, the trophy. Tell them about. <laughs> <laughs> If I if I told my dad if I went to my dad you I got said my the homeless at one time hey I got my first job when I was like fourteen or fifteen too if I told my dad hey papa I'm gonna go interview for a job he'd be like oh good job can you come with me oh you need a ride no 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 can you sit in there while I do no, the interview yeah. he would have looked at me like this, is this a joke do you want me to slap <laughs> you or did I like did I did I totally fail as a yeah. father like what's going on here? Yeah. Yeah. that's yeah. hilarious oh. do I need to cut you off from everything oh. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> anyway, hey, speaking of family, I got to tell you guys. Uh, okay, so I told you guys how I made those protein popsicles with the uh, the, the chocolate uh, bone broth protein. Yeah, how did that go over? Oh, it's amazing. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I got to do that again. No, no, no. So you, you, use, you use coconut milk or macadamia nut milk or almond milk, freeze it. That's it. And you make little popsicles for your kids, and it's protein. It's mostly protein. Well, what I did is I also made the ice cream and the Ninja Creamy. Oh, uh, you guys are No good. affiliation. They need to sponsor us. Bro. Bro, it I, is delicious it's coconut wild. milk though from the can so it's got that i want to try milk. that because i know that mm. you i know that you otherwise can't. it's like a slushy right you yeah. need to have a little bit of fat to give yeah. it that creamy yeah mm. yeah, yeah that's why I, okay that's why i know i i never tried coconut milk especially from, from the, the can, can whereas i know that's creamy. it is very it is whipped up it is like ice cream it is so good okay so good i'll try that i mean i'm so sold on that thing i think it's so fascinating it doesn't make sense to me i don't, <laughs> I, I don't understand the science i just don't because that the, the, the same thing i go like this in a shaker cup yeah, yeah. that makes like yeah. liquid yeah. <laughs> you put it in that thing and it comes out ice cream like that doesn't make sense what's to me. happening here you know, where, where where is the science at yeah i don't understand <laughs> and it just looks like it's a thing that does this so I'm like this doesn't make sense. It's put some, that on the periodic table. Yeah, it's, it's something like, about how it, it must mix air in at, 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 at a certain rate that create that texture. It's got to yeah. be what it is. By the way, this oh, is I know great, there's some science happening. Yeah. It's very obvious to me. <laughs> it's very obvious that you guys <laughs> from liquid to yeah. solid to slushy yeah. to Adam's, ice cream. I was get on the phone with them, try and sponsor. Listen, explain the sciences. <laughs> I, uh, I, this is a good a good point though because it just goes to show you how much of a role texture plays in palatability it's the same flavor yeah oh yeah it's everything mm -hmm. the same the yeah. difference is the texture and it makes me feel like i'm eating ice cream yes yeah but it's the texture but just goes to show how complex hyper pal or palatability is and what these food companies can do to make food irresistible and and one of them is texture they'll just master the texture of a food uh, along with all these other things and make things so completely irresistible in fact you guys want to trip off something this is a uh, so jackie sometimes she shares some Really, really cool studies. So check this one out. So um, this, okay, is that there's a there's an established scientific criteria for determining if something is addictive, and this was established uh, for tobacco products. So when they were trying to establish, like, how do we, like, what what is the criteria that we can use to judge whether or not something is addictive? This started and is based off of tobacco. And then they use this for other things like, okay, other drugs are addictive or other things are addictive based off this criteria. You, you guys want to know what fits the criteria huh. as addictive huh. based off of this established sci scientific uh, you know, basis or whatever? Highly processed foods. Mm -hmm. Highly processed foods fit this criteria. They, are, they can be, if you base it off of what we use to determine whether or not other things are addictive, like tobacco, if you base it off that, highly processed foods 
fit that criteria. So they are indeed addictive based off of that context. And the fact that we need a study for that. I know, but people <laughs> argue it. They try to argue it. It's like, I know. Yeah. It's, I you think know? it's hilarious when someone tries to argue that. It's just like, for the trolls, yeah, the, the get all this triggered. Is, this is why we have, uh, and this is a big reason. It's not the only reason, but it's a big reason why we have an obesity epidemic. We've made food drugs is what we did. We are serving food drugs to people. And so uh, people are having a tough time eating an appropriate amount so much so that they know that their health is bad and they can't stop. Mm -hmm. And this has been a creation of- It's, of, it's, of, it's such a snowball scientists. effect too because it's really hard to get out of. Um, yes. It normally takes, it takes me a solid three to four weeks of like hard, strict diet and eating. To change your- To change yeah. the, the palate and be like, oh, okay, I don't even, yeah. I, I don't crave it That's anymore. Crazy. I mean, that's how strong the cravings are. The cravings are so strong that even weeks later after not having mm. it, you still have this pull towards it. And then you get to a point where you've disciplined yourself to stay away from it for a period of time, which is interesting. Cause, and to your point with cigarettes, it's I think it's much like any other addictive behavior or mm -hmm. whatever that you do. Mm -hmm. It's like it, it obviously the first week of letting go of cigarettes the or alcohol. The longer you go or, without it, the, the easier it is. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then it, and then you play, the, then you have this mind game of like, oh, I really don't even want it that bad, but you know, maybe I'll try it and yeah, see. Yeah, yeah. And that's the dangerous part of, of realizing that, okay, you know, I think I'm okay. I don't really desire anymore. Let me see. And then it creeps back in and then you're back into that vicious cycle and then it's really tough to get out of that. Yeah, I, I firmly yeah. believe if we, and I'm not saying this is the answer. I'm just saying, let's say I had a magic wand and we could eliminate all hyper palatable, heavily processed foods and replace it with, you know, whole natural foods. In other words, people stay, still have the same access to proteins, fats, and carbs. I think we would largely solve, we would probably see obesity rates fall back to where they were, uh, you know, in the 50s and 60s, which was a fraction uh, of what is it, what it is now. Again, because these foods are addictive. Mm -hmm. So, but we never will, though. No, There's too yeah. much. No, 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 too no, much. No. It's so money. profitable. I know. So profitable. You can patent it. Again, the margins are so big. And the other side of it is, we like them. Mm -hmm. Like people love them because we love, you know, drug like effects. Yeah, I mean, we figured out how to make it more crunchy, more salty, more irresistible. Sweet. Like, yeah, it's just like it, it doesn't really compare unless you take it out of your diet and reintroduce actual whole foods. You know, speaking of technology with Ninja Cream and processed foods and staying around that 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 vein or whatever, did you guys see the um, virtual driver's license? California is, did you, California can do this uh -huh. now. So yeah, I've been, I wanted is to this wait. this for driving in, the, in so, virtual places? No, 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 no. <laughs> so you don't need to have your license on you anymore. You basically, so nobody ever forgets their phone. Yeah. But how yeah. often do you forget your wallet yeah. or your driver's license or something like that? So it's now to where you can it can be on an app to where you can oh, just cool. I know and then they'll scan it or something yeah I'm, I imagine that's exactly how it works well, so, that makes sense I know it's, it's kind of weird the that we DMV took DMV is innovating that, well I don't even know if that's necessarily DMV or if it's probably like another business <laughs> yeah, that yeah. actually it's another business like yeah. hey this is going to be convenient oh it wow. is DMV look at that you are wow what yeah. First mobile but if you go into the DMV, your that's experience amazing. Is, is the same. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Five years ago. <laughs> <laughs> exactly the same. Still get a number, you know, got to look it up on the microfiche. Yeah, yeah, that's... <laughs> there's another There's another uh, tech thing that I wanted to bring up, and it, and it was on my notes like two weeks ago, so I'm going to have to have Doug look it up so I can I can remember all the, the facts about it. But it was the founder from Spotify mm. who made this, uh, it's like a health body scanner thing. Really interesting, and I wanted, hmm. to, I wanted to look it up together. I think it's called Neko, N E. N E K O. Did so you send this to us? I don't think I sent it to you guys. No, um, I haven't heard that. I have. I, I know up, one that's similar. Yeah, it's like a health body scanner uh, called Neko, and it was from the guy who's who created. I think that's it right there. Let's pull it up right here. Oh, <clears throat> the, the founder of Spotify did it, and it sounded so body scanning AI. So how does that work? I'm imagining it scans your body and it some takes some other metrics and then is able to give you some. Uh, some prognosis or, yeah, or oh, yeah, wow. yeah. to be able to forecast things like cancer and really? heart disease, uh, all these things. Wow. Like so that other one, uh, it's called Sybil. It was uh, through MIT. They, um, they did it just though for, uh, for the lungs and, and figuring out like the development of lung cancer. So they take a few 3d images and then it like through its predictive algorithms kind of forecast that. Hey, sorry to interrupt. We have a free guide titled Understanding Your Mood, Stress, and Sleep. It tackles all of those things from a health and longevity perspective. It's a totally, totally 
free guide. So just click on the link at the top of the description below. So this is one of the things that I think is really cool and interesting about AI and I think is going to be a huge game changer for us. I do think that yeah. the, with AI, what it's going to be able to do for medicine and technology like this to where people, and imagine, obviously this is probably expensive right now, but at one point we could be at a place where we have this type of technology in our homes to where we could be monitoring yeah. our, our health real time. And I want to believe, even though I'm not 100% sold on if, like we were just talking about obesity and processed food, like if you were doing it, you had this access to this scanner to tell you like, hey, you're on track for heart disease in this many years if you don't change course. Or, oh, and we had AI technology to forecast what's going on with your health based off of like all these readings. I don't know if it would make anybody change. I, that's what I, I'm wondering. It's it would be interesting because would, would yeah, you? you're a fitness guy. Yeah, that's fair. I, that's why I, I don't know either. I don't know. Because people know, man. Do you, do you, I, most people know. I feel like I feel like a lot of people- um, Unless it scared the crap out of them. I mean, that would scare the crap out of me, right? uh -huh. even if I wasn't a fitness person, right? Would, like if I got on a thing and it said, based off of our AI readings, yeah. you should be dead in seven years. <laughs> like, I mean, no, seriously, or, or you will have a heart attack yeah. or a stroke if you can, like, yeah. that would be enough to scare me straight. Yeah, I was thinking about this because the the one I mentioned, it's like just focused in this one area or this one system of the body. Or I wonder, like, you know, because AI right now, it's so um, there's a lot of different. There's innovation for sure, but it's like all of them are addressing very specific things. It's not like you know this big uh, artificial intelligence that knows like all the things. It's oh, like general the, intelligence. Yeah, it's, yeah. So it's either like through our interactions and communication, or it's like now they're trying to kind of focus on imagery. Uh, it'd be interesting to see like how many of those. Uh, they develop before finally they do have like a full body scanner where you know what? it does what you're talking about. Yeah. You know where I think you'll probably see that stuff first. Are you reading on it, Doug? Yeah. So I think, so you know where that, um, where I think that's going to show up, that clip you sent me, Adam, that where somebody was talking about the trends in the gym industry. Oh yeah. Yeah. The thing, commercial gyms are dying. Yeah. Well, what it is, and I remember talking even with Don about this, the, the mid tier gyms, the mid tier, like nice, it's more than the super cheap gyms, but it's not as much as the super exclusive, you know, health clubs or whatever. That's dying. That's dying. Yeah. yeah. What you're left with are the dirt cheap gyms and then the luxury gyms that offer, you know, spirituality courses and red light therapy and recovery facilities. And, you know, they offer, they have cafes and that kind of stuff. Those are exploding. Yeah. And I feel like those places will probably bring this kind of technology in there first. Oh, for because sure. you'll go in and imagine like what a what a great imagine managing that gym, what a great thing that would be to sell. Yeah. Hey, you can come in here and you have an assessment with a trainer mm -hmm. and we do this body scan that is this much accuracy for detecting it's like the this regenerative thing. longevity scan or totally. something and gives you all this prediction. And then you do stuff. a checkup every six months and we see your progress or whatever. Like yeah. that sounds amazing. Well, fact, uh, other are you stuff, getting any more detail on it, Doug? Yeah, I'm actually working on something else here right at the moment. Oh, but okay. uh, yeah, <laughs> sorry. That's super helpful. Sorry. <laughs> Adam keeps that. <laughs> well, I didn't know you were going to quiz me on it. Well, I mentioned <laughs> that. It's been so over two weeks since I read the article. And I was so so maybe... I'll read and tell you what it does. So a company runs a series of scans and tests that creates millions of data points and help determine your state of health across a range of cardiovascular, metabolic, and other conditions. Then you have an in-person meeting with a doctor to discuss the data and that's included in the session. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So there you wow. go. Well, so heading in the direction. Yeah, yeah like that's that. promising. What's that full body? There's a full body. I don't know if it's an MRI. That, it's the ones that you that the all in guys talked about. Yes, right? Yeah. I was yeah. looking into that. Yeah. It wasn't. It wasn't it's a that, few thousand dollars to do it. But 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 it you'll can, catch. Yeah, it's it's a full body scan. Yeah. So you see if you have any cancers yeah. anywhere that before you'll ever detect. Before them. and it was like I forgot what the the percentage it was a very high like the, yes it was how accurate it was and there's several people that have like oh, i mean people that I've, I've heard who found things that wouldn't have gotten found for like a year and by the time it got found so it this like, is that's yeah. what i'm where i'm getting at with this this technology here is because you you i'm I'm, a, I'm familiar with that like i heard the yeah. I, I heard those guys talk about that last year this is now coming on the scene i've heard some other ones like we're not that far away from this type of technology being accessible all right now it's probably for the uber rich and it's tough that's how all technology is right there was yeah. a time when only yeah. a few people could have phones in their car 
and now everybody has one in their pocket. So at one point, th it'll be accessible to everybody. Mm -hmm. And you know, the question is, does that tool, I mean, this is a great argument and debate, right? Does, does more data, more information, more accurate- It'll help with, um, with medical interventions for sure. Because what happens with AI is it could take multiple data points and through uh, looking at other trends and when it's doing this for millions of people, it could pick up correlations and associations that we haven't picked up on yet. Mm -hmm. So it's like, oh, if you have this and this and this ratio by themselves, nobody would ever say this is a red flag. They seem okay. But because this AI has this massive amount of data and can put it, compile it all, say, oh, these ratios equal a 57% increased risk of this, that, and the other. Yeah. That's what AI is I feel like, uh, I mean, I feel like this will help men the most. And that's <laughs> mainly because they're not going to go get checked. Oh, <laughs> so they're watching. Yeah, like, <laughs> you know, how they're always <laughs> trying to say, like, watch. you know, testicular cancer or whatever. Like, you're supposed to, like, you know, be on top of that and, like, yeah. check yourself and, mm -hmm. you know, and, like, all these, like, oh, I have a, a dark mole that's a little weird, you know, like, whatever. I told you guys about that a while ago, right? With that guy who, who uh, thought he was funny. He peed on a, a pregnancy test and it showed that he was pregnant and he was posting it on social media. And he's like, oh, guys, look, it says I'm pregnant. And then one of his buddies, a doctor, he's like, go get checked. You probably have to stick your cancer. Oh, my God. Because you're producing HCG at such a high amount. Joke's on you. Yeah, and he yeah. did. He did have to stick wow. your cancer, That's, bro. That is unfortunate. Yeah. Wow. I don't know if how reliable that is, but that was- a, I yeah. mean, how lucky is that, though, that you did that? Yeah, well, I mean- it, That's I, pretty I lucky you that caught you, it. you got lucky like that. Uh, I, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, I think about this a lot with like- um, you know, our, our body fat testing, your your fat secret, my fitness pal apps. I mean, this is all stuff that you guys remember like how crazy hard it was when we first started. Like to get accurate readings of just what you were intaking oh or your like I mean oh, yeah, yeah. there's a lot of like yeah. and and so much margin for error. We're we're fatter today than what we were then. Health so did, did it really help us, you know? So will technology like this Really, or is it just going to continue to hate, help the same small demographic of people that were already going to do the things? I think anyways? for sure, Probably initially, for, yeah. I think for sure for medical interventions, I think the AI is going to be able to figure out the better, uh, more precise doses of medications, applications, maybe earlier diagnosis. But look, here's the deal: our medicine has gotten far more advanced over the last, you know, few decades. But this is the first generation that's not going to live longer than the previous one. Might actually uh, fall short, hmm. and it's not because medicine hasn't advanced. So what? Okay, it's because you, we're just living terribly is that unhealthy lives. Is that conflicting? Because I've heard, I've heard the opposite. I heard this is we might live to one twenty, one thirty with technology. Because they're predicting what technology we're going to have. But as of right now, our lifespans are we're, we're, we're worse than our parents. Yeah, it looks like it. Looks like we're probably going to do worse. Than our parents did. I sure hope that's not true. Because uh, I mean, not we, us. Maybe I was gonna say because you. I mean, our our parents' generation was not exercising and following their diet oh, yeah. like we were from age Just twenty. Exercise and had to you know, Even, extend us. 10 yeah, years. The, there's a very small percentage of the population that are our parents' age that were there's working some, out and exercising at an early. There's age. There's some interesting arguments around this, right? There's uh, they were more active and they generally ate less processed foods, but then the chemical exposures. Have you guys very seen? High. It's going viral on social media right now. Have you seen? You've all heard this, right? Like, I ate that when I was a kid. I'm fine. Somebody put up uh, boxes of processed foods from the 80s versus now and the ingredients. So, like, we grew up eating Fruit Loops, eating, you know, macaroni and cheese, Kraft, you know, whatever. The ingredients aren't the same. They're not the same. Hmm. They're like... It's like three times as many ingredients. And well, there's I've a lot seen, more chemicals in them now than there were when we were. Kids. I mean, I've seen that huh. comparison right now in just like uh, Europe to here. Yes. Uh, like, yeah. in, in in fact, macaroni and cheese is one of the examples I've seen. Yes. And like our yeah, macaroni they've outlawed cheese. certain chemicals that we allow here somehow. It's like what? That's no, no. There's there's uh, I don't remember what the number was, but there's a num a certain number amount of new chemicals that are introduced uh, every single year into the market that passed regulation, but we have no possible way of testing the effect of all of them combined and the exposures of all of them. There's uh -huh. no way of testing that. And so it's, uh, it's crazy. What does that say? Why life expectancy is falling? Oh, COVID-19 and drug overdoses are the biggest contributors. That's so funny you brought up COVID-19. Do you guys know what the death rate is, was on COVID-19 when they, when they does all- Does anybody? <laughs> when all was said and done? No, no, new study came out. Okay. Yeah, a big study came out. Age stratified infection fatality rate of COVID-19 in the non-elderly population. If you were, if you, let's see, if you were under 70. Under 70. Under 70. Okay. Your death rate from COVID was 0.07%. One in 1,500. 
I was a death rate. I That's know. not what I uh, and we, was told. We did a lot of crazy stuff to, to, to prevent we actually caused more problems what we did. You know why though, which is interesting that that that's a true stat is that I don't know anybody at this point though, that didn't have somebody who they knew that died from it. Yeah. Almost. And so that, because that, because so hit, many people got it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So because that so many people got it, that stat was, it's not unrealistic or far for, for someone to have somebody who was under the age of 70 who got it and died. I mean, I, it's it's crazy, but I actually know somebody like that. Uh, as they were going, they they were on their deathbed. Um, they actually like put on a cause of death, COVID nineteen, and, and they didn't even, didn't even contract it. Yeah, that's bloated numbers. That's true. Oh yeah, I know that, that actually too. happened. No, like, I know. I mean, you know how hospitals got have, paid? They got nurses. paid extra for that. Yeah, yeah. So got it's that's just why I'm a little like tainted by the whole subject. Yeah, there 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 were the hospitals actually got for treating people with COVID and for COVID deaths. Got extra money yeah. uh, from the government. Yeah, yeah. no, they were. So told, they were in, there, was, there was hospitals that were. And I'm not saying this is every hospital, but there were hospitals. I had nurse friends and stuff that worked at hospitals that were instructed mm -hmm. that if that person had COVID, even That's if what they, they died, died from yeah, something car accident, else, but they had COVID. Yeah, they had COVID. You put them on that list as COVID nineteen. So they were very much so instructed to do that. If, if there was any way to attach, do you know what so. the big learning lesson I think is? Looking back at that whole period, they were all uh, fools. Y y well. I mean, not far. Mm -hmm. I would say the big lesson is how easily manipulated, because yeah. mo most people, this is, so don't feel bad if, if you, one of these people that got manipulated, it was, it was pretty much everybody, how easily manipulated we are through fear. Mm -hmm. If you just scare us enough with enough fear stuff, we'll pretty much do anything. We'll give up and do anything, and we'll even harm our own children, which is a lot of what we did. A lot of the problems that came from those, those policies really did a number on children, locking them up and don't be around your friends and wear a mask. Nobody can see your face. You can't see other people's face. You can't read their, their emotions, like real, all damaging stuff. That's going to last for a long time, all because we were scared. So learning, that's a learning lesson. And, and to think it won't happen again is stupid because scary things happen all the time. I mean, so of course it will. It's not even, it's not over still. I mean, I'm, there's, I still go plenty of places where someone's got their kids with a mask on still. Oh, I'm still crazy. arguing with people over it. It's like, uh, it's crazy. I, Katrina, every time she sees one, she looks at me right away. Keep your mouth shut. <laughs> <laughs> I just can't. I I'm feel just, empathy. You with the, yeah, with I the feel kid, bad, dude. Uh, they were traumatized. Everybody's still yeah, traumatized. When, you know, whatever. If you're, you're an adult, you do stupid stuff. I don't care what you do. It's the kids get me. That, yeah. that gets me. Like that bought that's because the kids they follow our lead. That's yeah. it. You know what I'm saying? Like, and if you're if you're a dad and you're scared, your kid's scared, guaranteed. Even for no matter what your reasoning being, you're you, you're scared in front of your kid. You're gonna your of kids, course your they kids, look at you to, that's right. to know how that's to right. feel. So uh, you know, and if you're a stupid person who's older and, and does stupid things, I don't care. It's to your that's to each their own. You know what I'm saying? That's on you. That doesn't bother me. It bothers me when I see the kids. Yeah. It bothers me because it's just like you your fear. It has just now bled in. You just just ruined another generation because of how scared you are. And now you, look at them. Well, I know. No, it's, oh, no, it's tough, dude. Terrible. It's tough. It's tough to see. Yeah. Um, but up. you have Mind Pump YouTube mashups up there. Who put that up there? Oh, I think people were asking about them. Yeah. People are wondering. Oh, some people have commented about them because they're not. This is new. So this is my additional favorite. The, my favorite of the complaints. I know. What are you doing? This, okay. So what, what we are did, you doing? Giving us more free content? Yeah, no. We How added, dare you? <laughs> so what we did is we ha we've taken uh, topics and we've we've edited previous episodes that cover that topic in different ways and put them together in these kind of mashup videos. It's additional content, so it's not replacing yeah any of our podcasts or anything else. It's just more. Uh, more content and it's just an easy resource. So now you could go, oh, all about fat loss, uh, all about muscle building, all about Listen, training it's, chest. It's to, it's to capture new listeners. Here, we five days a week, we've always done a show for every guy, you guys. Now we have seven days a week sh shows going up. Two of those are mashups that are topic focused and they do great at attracting new people. So if you've never heard of Mind Pump right. and you see this mashup, it's the first time you've ever seen any of that content. And the idea is to put all that focused content in one episode and it performs incredibly well for us. It gets a lot of new attention and listeners to us. It's only additional bonus to what you already do. We didn't replace anything you guys ever had. So the people that I've seen complain about are just comical to me. Yeah. How that you get mad that we've we've we're giving more free stuff? Yeah, <laughs> it's like it's crazy. So wild, dude. Somebody's like, I can't keep up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> sorry, I'm creating so overwhelming. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm creating anxiety in your life My because bad. I'm giving you too much. Stuff. Maybe you need to break an arm. My bad. My bad. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Go risk. Yeah. Go, yeah. go fall down. We should shout. What do we shout? Not uh, today. 
I mean, I got a shout out if yeah. you guys don't. Um, so I follow this guy in this page. He's actually one of David Weck's, I think, understudies. But he's like s- insanely strong. Does the craziest feats of strength all the oh, time. Cool. He's like just does really cool videos and content for uh, strength feats. Uh, his name is uh, Christopher Chamberlain. His handles eroding weakness. And uh, yeah, whatever. He's a badass. Awesome. Look, do you eat a high protein diet, but you want to maximize the effects of the high protein? Build more muscle, get better digestion. Use digestive enzymes, but don't use any. Use mass enzymes. These are digestive enzymes for fitness people. In fact, one study shows that it improves amino acid absorption by 1,200%, literally making your protein far more effective, the same protein you're eating now. Go to buyoptimizers.com forward slash mind pump. That's B-I-O-P-T-I-M-I-Z-E-R-S.com forward slash mind pump. And then use the code mind pump 10 to get 10% off. All right, back to the show. First question is from Miss Ming Lee. Do I need to count cal- calories? Sometimes I feel like I'm forcing myself to eat just to hit those numbers. Sometimes I hit my calories without effort. No, no, you don't need to count your calories. When it starts to get important, there's a couple of times when counting macros or calories is important. One, maybe during the education process, a lot of people just have no idea what 30 grams of protein looks like, what 10 grams of fat looks like, what you know 40 grams of carbs looks like. Uh, they just don't know. They just don't know what general you know amount of calories you would find in a particular meal would be. And so I would do this with clients oftentimes just to kind of educate them. They're like, oh, wow, that's how much that protein looks. That's what it looks like. And the second way you'd probably need to count calories is when you start to get real specific with your goals. Like if you want to be generally healthy, generally lean, you don't need to count calories. If you avoid heavily processed foods, if you try to eat your body weight uh, in, in grams of protein, you strength train, like your body fat percentage is probably, for most people, vast majority of people, it's going to fall within a nice healthy range. But if you want to get really lean, if you want to get definition, you want to see your abs, then you probably need to start counting calories because it gets much more uh, specific. I, I mean, I find the only thing that's really that, I mean, even, and I mean, even getting shredded. I mean, I think you get in really good shape just tracking protein. Mm-hmm. Protein is the main thing that you just need to follow and track. It's also the thing that most people struggle with hitting consistently. And it's the most important when you're following a strength training program. If you're lifting weights to build muscle, build your metabolism, to get leaner, mm-hmm. uh, hitting your protein intake day in and day out is far more important than you know watching exactly where your calories land. A hundred, like, and I'm going through this process right now, documenting this for everybody to watch, and I'm on week two of of counting. And you'll never hear me talk about, oh no, my calories were 2,800. Oh shoot, they're 32. It's like I, it's irrelevant to me. It's all you, all you hear me communicate is. Oh man, I need a little bit more protein. Oh man, I'm still not getting enough protein in my diet. Oh man, today's a good win. I got exactly where I need to protein. I'm not it, like the up or down a few hundred calories yeah. uh, a day is really irrelevant, especially when you're strength training and hitting that protein intake. Because if you do a good job of strength training and you're hitting your protein intake, and let's say you go over your calories a little bit, more than likely those additional calories will get partitioned over to helping you build muscle. Now, I'm not saying that just go bananas and like I say all the time, don't eat like an asshole. So if you eat thousands of calories over your maintenance, then yeah, you're going to put on some body fat too. But if you are strength training and you're eating protein-centric meals and you go a little bit above or below calories on some days, I, I'm telling you right now, it's not going to hurt you at all. Yeah. It's not, not not if you're hitting that protein intake. Yeah. Now, one thing I'd add to this is it's it's you're not meant to, and it's really not a good idea to live in a way to where you're constantly counting calories and macros. That is not a long-term solution for health and fitness. Like like it's a short-term way to educate yourself or maybe to get yourself to a particular goal. Mm -hmm. But if you live your life always counting, um, this is not a a good relationship with food. It just isn't, it it isn't, it just isn't. And it it leads to, tends to lead to anxiety and stress and and the over- Mm -hmm. The, the con- wanting to control everything too much. Unless you're, yeah, competing for something very specific. But, I mean, the only other thing that I tended to do as a trainer, and, and I know Adam's voiced this before, but it's like that, just that one week, uh, just to find out where your maintenance is at and, and just to have that education and awareness in terms of, like, what your tendencies are and, and your behaviors. So that way, 
too, you can sort of build or subtract or, or kind of maneuver from there a little more effectively. Next question is from Jacqueline O. Fit. Can you explain how different rep ranges can change your physique? All right. Now, before I get to the speculation, because this is pure speculation and anecdote, I'll talk about the objective ways that rep ranges um, affect your body. Mainly, it's in the kind of strength adaptation that you get, right? So, if you train in the low rep range, uh, let's say one to five, you're going to build a lot of what's known as absolute strength. You start to work in that eight to 12 rep range. This is more kind of your general strength. And then you have your strength endurance with the higher rep ranges, usually up to maybe like 30 reps. And then within that, there's explosive strength. There's the kind of strength that uh, pr provides stability. Um, so that's objective. That's what we can show in studies. You, you train a low rep range, you're going to get that kind of strength. You train a high rep range, that's the kind of strength you're going to get. Now, how it changes your body. Here's the anecdote. Bodybuilders have talked for a long time about how higher reps produces more of this kind of bodybuilder round look to your muscles and how low reps produce this really hard, solid kind of granite look to your muscles. I've think I've experienced this. It seems to affect my body similar when I train this way. With clients, it's hard to say because I never really trained too many people that got to that level to where you could tell the difference. Um, but mainly, it's about uh, this, the, the the type of performance adaptation that you're going to get. There, I mean, there's another way to actually present it too, is just that when you train in any rep range, let's say, let's say you, you're the type of person who likes <sighs> the 12 to 15 rep range, and you've built somewhat muscle that way, and let's say you're at a plateau and someone's telling you, oh, you should dr drop to low reps to build more muscle or change your physique, they're right. And part of that is because it's also a novel stimulus. Uh, when we manipulate rep ranges like that, even when you're doing the same exercises, it's another novel stimulus. Moving a squat uh, for 12 to 15 re reps feels way different than moving a squat for five reps. Mm -hmm. Even though you're doing the same movement, the load, the type of muscle demand, that like the at, in comparing it to muscle endurance versus absolute strength, that it, it feels different. Very different. And that novel stimulus will then stimulate more muscle growth and vice versa. So if you trained always in the five rep range and you've been in a plateau and your goal is to build more muscle, I would tell you to go to 15 reps because in, in doing the same exercises, that 15 reps now becomes a novel stimulus for that person. That novel stimulus will create more muscle. Now, remember we had Stan Efferding on the show mm -hmm. um, and he was a bodybuilder, but he was known as the world's strongest bodybuilder because he also competed as a powerlifter. In order to get his pro card, he started training with Flex Wheeler, who was a top bodybuilder in the 90s, early 2000s. And one of the things Flex Wheeler did was he said, we need to bring up your legs. And what did he do? 20 rep sets of squat. Mm, yeah. And they blew up they really developed Stan's legs. Now, main reason why he did is because Stan always trained in the heavy, low rep range. And it was a new stimulus, and he just got these incredible results from it. So that's you know what, why it's important to cycle in and out of different rep ranges if you want to avoid plateaus and get consistent results. Hey, sorry to interrupt. It's October. MAPS Muscle Mommy is 50% off, half off. If you're interested, click on the link below. All right, back to the show. Next question is from Arky Drums. What is the best approach to tackle a one-week family holiday where you know you're going to be eating freely and in abundance? Training at the resort is easy to do. Just curious about what sort of training would be best. I believe this is the origin of when I first started saying, don't eat like an asshole. It was. I think so, yeah, right? That I was think, your advice. Mm. Yeah, I think this was like the, the, like so obviously you've heard that <laughs> been said on the show many, many times now, but I believe it came from a question. I think like, it did. You yeah. know, before we before we give advice on this, because we'll have some, I, you know, I have to pose this uh, to this question. It's like, if you're, if you're living a life where you are stressed out over your diet for a week. A week. Because you're on a vacation, and it's worrying yeah, you and you want to plan it out because you're not sure what you're going to do and how it's going to be, um, then you need to have a, a larger evaluation of your overall relationship, your long-term relationship to fitness and nutrition. Because if you're consistent, if you're consistent, if it's a part of your life and you're exercising, right, and you're eating for the most part, 80%, 90% of the time, you eat healthy. The way you would view a one-week vacation is like this. You wouldn't even think about the food. It would be like, yeah. I'm going to go spend time with my family for a week and we're going to have so much fun. The reason why this stresses you out is because your relationship with nutrition and fitness hasn't matured to that point yet. So you're at this point where you're worried. What are you? What do I do? What are my plans? Because I know I'm going to go off. 
or I'm worried yeah. about gaining body fat or I'm worried about, you know, losing muscle. And I get it. I was there for a long time, but really it's about being with your family. That's ultimately what it's all about. All right. So advice wise, uh, hit your, your body weight and protein, eat it first. And that would be it. That would be the last, that, that would be the only thing I would say. And then Adam's famous line. Yeah. Don't, don't eat, eat like an asshole. asshole. The re, okay. So the re, where that comes from and why, uh, I know it's like partly tongue, tongue in cheek, but it's also very true, right? Part of this problem, why people ask these questions, is they have they don't have a really good understanding of how the body puts uh, muscle or body oh, body fat on. The likelihood, the probability of in a week's time, you adding seven to ten pounds of fat all in one week, almost impossible. Is almost impossible. I mean, you yeah. literally would have to eat like an asshole. Like all you You'd did, have to try. Yes, you would have to try. I mean, all you would have to do is eat cake and ice cream for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and Buffets. drink alcohol. I mean, you would have to. <laughs> The amount of calories you would you would need to consume to literally put seven pounds of fat on in a, in a even to put on three pounds of body fat maybe in a carnival cruise. So what happens and why people now people are listening right now they're going whatever I put ten pounds on last year when I went on my lake trip or what that okay what that was was you ingested a ton of probably sugars and carbs and so that carbs pair with water. You probably ate a bunch of things that don't agree with your gut. Your gut probably got inflamed. So you are you got uh, inflammation going on. You got water retention going on. Maybe you did put a pound of fat on. You have a lot of things going on. You have a bunch of extra carbs. So your body's all filled out. Like you, you are temporarily high on the scale, but you didn't actually put 10 pounds of fat no, on that week. It no. just doesn't happen. Now, the second way. part of the question was what kind of training would be best? You know, here's what I do when I'm on my vacation now. Um, the workouts for me now are more about on the vacation, just kind of starting the day out. If I do the workout at all, and if I do, it's typically a full body, one exercise per body part, and sometimes it's muscle preservation. Yeah, I'm just getting a pump. Crazy. Yep, I'm getting a pump. I'm going legs, chest, back, shoulders, biceps, triceps, little core amount. I never train. It takes me off. I never train on a whole. If I do, it's just so I feel good. Like I mean, that's it for energy. Yeah, yeah. but, but I, if I do anything, it's activity. It's yeah, go wakeboard. It's, it's go for a hike sure. with my wife. It's go you know do something physical. Yeah. Like I'm not against that. Like yeah. for sure, enjoy that. But like. Going inside of a, like, I'm in Hawaii. I'm going to go inside of a fucking gym. Like, are you kidding me? <laughs> yeah. Like, that's weird. Yeah. That's yeah. weird to me. Yeah. Yeah. That's weird to me. I mean, I, I, I've got a, I got I like a gym in my talk. garage and I work in a gym every day. Like, the fact that I want to go see a gym on my vacation. Yeah, you're not there for the gym. No. Dude, no. just enjoy yourself and don't overdo it. That's literally it. That's yeah. my advice. That's yeah. it. Yeah, don't focus so heavily on it. Next question is from Libby Sanderson 14. Please explain the basics of gym etiquette. I don't know what I'm doing. Sin sincerely, I'm a home gym person intimidated intimidated by going to the gym. You know, gym etiquette is really centered on being a courteous, polite, and thoughtful person. It really is. So when you go into a gym, gym etiquette looks like this. If you use a piece of equipment, re-rack the weight or put it back to how you found it, which should be like ready for the wipe next person. Wipe off your sweat. Wipe don't off your gross. sweat. If somebody asks you if they can jump in, so let's say you're doing uh, you know, a machine or you're, you're using a piece of equipment and somebody says, hey, how many sets do you have left? Gym etiquette is to tell them, oh, I have three sets left, but then also if you'd like, you can jump in and let them jump in. Jumping in between sets is also gym etiquette. Um, it's also gym etiquette to not wear heavy ass perfume. This yeah. is actually a big deal. But, but do wear deodorant. But wear deodorant. <laughs> wear deodorant. I wear deodorant. highly suggest that. And just, you're just doing your workout and you're just really putting things away and being courteous. That's really what it's, the, the, the jumping in between sets, this one's the one that a lot of people That's probably the most confusing. Yeah. That yeah. is. Like, what do I do if somebody very wants to unique work in? To the gym. And is it, uh, is it okay for me to ask to use? I asked, so it's funny that this happened this morning. Yeah, it's this always happened. okay. And yeah. I could tell it was a kid who might be new in the gym. He must've been 19. Maybe I went to UFC gym. And I went up to him and I said, hey, how many sets do you have left? And he looked at me because I'm, I'm a lot bigger than him, right? <laughs> He's like the skinny teenage kid, right? He looked at me like, I'm done now. Do I have to leave now? He's like, <laughs> like, th like, like a, almost like three sets. And I'm like, cool, I'll, I'll be back when you're done. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I think he didn't realize like you could ask that to be okay. Yeah, yeah. Type of deal. Jumping in is a, is a that's a big one. And then putting your equipment away. Uh, this, this one's huge. Like if you use a plate loaded machine, use a pair of dumbbells, uh, you just put it back. Yeah. After you're done with I it. I just always think of like some like little old lady or something on after me. Like I have to like set it up so it's ready to go. 
Yeah, I, I think the the big is the the working in thing that's probably the most confusing for people. I always offer. So if somebody asks me, I have my headphones on and say, "Hey, how many sets you have?" and I'm like, "Oh, I've got you know four you sets." You can jump in. I have four sets. You can work in with me if you want. Is what I say. Oh yeah, um, here's, there's more to that. If you're the one jumping in, you're responsible. Although they'll probably help you for changing the weight. That's the other part of it. Yeah, yeah. No, so if, if I, I'm jumping in, I'm going to change your weight yeah, stack and I'm going to change it back. Put it back. Yeah, to where you were at. Well, yes. Yeah, yeah. So no, it's being, it's being, plot. I mean, we did a whole episode on this. An old one, we, right? Yeah. We've done, we've done a couple. It I was think. pretty we've funny. Like, I think we've yeah. done like two gym etiquette mm -hmm. ones, so you could totally search the. There's Ask also gym com. etiquette with clothing, but it's it's like don't wear jeans, don't wear jean shorts. Uh, what else? Don't wear little tiny shorts and you know. <laughs> That's acceptable. Not, not if you're not a guy. For everybody. Oh, exactly. oh, not for guy. <laughs> not for the guy curling Listen, into the mirror. We've all like this. we've all seen the we've all seen. I the mean, dude just with if the you're wearing shorts, wear them small shorts, wear underwear underneath them. So. Yes, Please, thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sit on the sit yeah. on the bench. Something to keep everything. Leave a sweat mark on the bench. Yeah. So you can yeah. see what's going on. I mean, I, I, gyms are really for the most part. I know everybody probably has some random story they can tell, but for the most part, I think gyms are really friendly. Super you know? yeah. friendly and. Uh, you know, and, and if you ask questions and, hey, uh, is it okay if I do this? or is it okay? I mean, people are, will normally explain that. I, one of the best things when you're getting to go work at a commercial gym uh, is find out who the, the fitness manager or the GM is and mm -hmm. introduce yourself and just tell them that you're new here. Like, hey, I'm I'm, I'm Lindsay. I'm new here. And I'll try and sell you training. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, I mean it's it's a, it's nice to get to know uh, the mm. the managers who are running the facility. Yeah. Um, they'll help you feel more comfortable, especially if they're good and it's a good place. You know what I do now because obviously we've been working out in gyms forever. If I notice somebody that's working hard and it looks like they're relatively new uh, or you know whatever, I always make it a point to tell them your mind pumps out. No, <laughs> hey, <do> listen <laughs> to my podcast. I have mind pumps out. <laughs> no, no, no. I, I, I fist bump them. I walk by and I'll make sure I give them one of these. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Just to encourage them because yeah. I know what it's like to be. I remember as a kid being a, that new. I was never really intimidated. I was so excited, but I got. I remember I was one of my. I told the story many times. I got you know pulled in by this group of like very intimidating power lifters, and it was a great. It was such a great feeling. It's like you know I want everybody to feel like that when they walk into the gym. All right, I know you like that episode. If you did, check this one out. 30% body fat. For men, this is way too high. This is actually a bit high for women as well. So in today's episode, we're talking about how you can go from 30 to 10. What is 10% body fat? This is when you have a visible six pack. Can you go from 30 to 10%? Yes, it's possible, but not if you guess along the way. So we're gonna talk about how you can do that in today's episode. Now there's a huge range right of like body types yeah you know, some people can run uh a little bit heavier uh and or a little bit higher body